Get ready to embark on an electrifying entrepreneurial journey. Join us as we dive into the minds of five extraordinary entrepreneurs who have scaled online businesses to awe-inspiring heights. Gary Green, Chris Miller, Lori Brown, Bobby Christie, and Terry Wilson are here to share their secrets of success. From visionaries to marketing mavens, these remarkable individuals will unveil their strategies, challenges, and pivotal moments that shaped their rise. The Big Five Podcast starts now. Starts right now. <laughs> right Hello. now. Hello. Let's go. Are we here? We're here. We are We're here. all here. <laughs> Who's missing? If you're if you're not here, raise your hand. <laughs> Man, everybody's in attendance. What is happening? We got the powerhouse in, in play right now, right? This is actually the big five for the big five podcast. <laughs> big five. Man. I think it's a sign. Man. I think it's a sign. I think this is the seventh seal. Once the big five all show up, look toward the east. <laughs> Your redemption draweth nigh. I know I missed last week. I know I heard you guys were talking about me when I wasn't behind my back. When I wasn't here, okay? We sent you the recording. It couldn't be behind your back. <laughs> we were bragging about talking about it. <laughs> What did we talk about last week? What was it? Y'all remember episode? Everything. Well, I don't know. What was the? Know. We, we didn't great touch on a subject table. last week. What was the subject? I forget. I felt like we had something. I can't remember what it was. That guy's song and just oh know about yeah, just being just being real with people. Be yourself. Developing you know, a message to... that moves people. Creating yeah. content that connects. Yeah, I remember that. So, but we got into some crazy stuff last week, though. We 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 really branched out there. We got a bunch of yeah, Elmer I mean, Fudd's Ronald on Reagan, this. <laughs> Secret Service. <laughs> we ought to call this the Elmer Fudd podcast because we're all hunting rabbits. <laughs> Where'd it go, <laughs> folks? You never know what you're going to get on the Big Five. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, don't miss an episode. Nah. We well, could go anywhere. We all got our uh, Kentucky uh, beverages of choice. I've got my sweet tea. What do you got, Lori? What has she got? What is she holding? I up? got some Blantons. Oh, some Blantons. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm telling you right There's now. a little horse for my racetrack. <laughs> for those well, who are in Kentucky. You heard about them stories. They, you talk to these older people that are like, they hate, make it to 100, 102. 105 they go well hey what's your secret well what i mean how do you do it well i get a shot of whiskey every morning i don't do that every single day so you hear that like so many different like stories right you're like there might be something to that right <laughs> my great grandfather lived to be 108 years old wow and he had a steel in the back of his house that he made his own moonshine with grew his own tobacco and that's all they did was smoke and drink <laughs> and eat like pigs. I mean, literal pigs. They would slaughter hogs and just eat them. I was like, they did everything they tell you today not to do and lived to be 108 and was healthy and happy. George Burns, man, that dude smoked cigars bigger than his head. Oh he goodness. lived forever. Yeah. Well, if, if you're over 40, you're going to know who George Burns is, right? <laughs> <laughs> sort of like the Charlie's Angels. Crowd, yeah. They're like, wait a second. Let me get on the interweb. Ooh. Okay, let me go get some information here, right? <laughs> yeah, if you, Reagan, if you're listening to this, just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy from church that I knew. He, he didn't make it after all, all that time, but uh, his name was Bill Heyman, and he – on his 94th birthday, I told him, I said, you know, you got about, you got about 26 years left to make the record. And he said, Chris, if I have to live another 26 years, I may just have to do it myself. <laughs> He's like, I am tired. <laughs> well, look at Dick Van Dyke, right? He's coming up like on a hundred, you know? Yeah. So. Speaking of uh, Bob Barker Dude, just passed. Dance. How old was he? He did oh, 99. Yeah. 99, 99, yeah. Nine years old. And man, uh, if you make it to 99, I mean, that's just I mean, you you you've done some stuff, you yeah, know. Right? For real. I wonder how many uh dogs and cats got spaded or neutered because of Bob Barker. 
<laughs> more than I can count. <laughs> that man has cut off more. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, that was his uh, his little uh, fun, not little, but dude, he had a fundraiser. He did. Yeah, every yeah. sign yeah. off. I remember being sick as a child in school. There was a couple things you watched every day when you were sick at home. It was Price is Right and Little House on the Prairie. It oh seemed my like. <laughs> yeah. Man, Let's make going, a deal. Let's make going, a deal. You're going old school now. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's new school to me, babe. What are you talking about? I'm still listening to it. No, well, it's not. Well, we're on episode seven, and Miller Time had a great idea to talk about tonight. He picked tonight's topic. And tonight's topic is uh, ways and things and how we've changed in our business over the years. So uh, that's a great topic because I think I could go on for an hour just talking about how we've changed in the last year. <laughs> last ten, I mean, if Terry Wilson 10 years ago saw Terry Wilson today, he wouldn't even recognize what he's doing. He wouldn't even understand what language he's speaking. It's, it's so different just in the, the last, uh, you know, several, especially last four or five years, but uh, last year's been crazy too. But Chris, you started off, this is your topic, so talk to me. What 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 are changes that you've seen in your business and what you've done and how is the Chris Miller today so different as a business person, businessman in his activities and what he's doing versus what Chris Miller was just a few years ago? Well, I mean, first of all, just a few years ago, the concept of running six businesses at the same time is not something I could even fathom. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that I can do it all from one terminal is even more insane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's not something that I could have done then. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not possible. So, I mean, that's really cool. When you sit down and you think about how far we've come, I mean, this is a supercomputer that used to take up an entire building. Yeah. Right. And oh, yeah. Now it sits in your pocket all day. Oh, we, we put a man on the moon with less computing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, there's some really cool stuff that we do today that I sure is. If I told you how many cell phones and beepers I threw out the car window off the highway over the years, it's because it was so annoying to me. Yeah. And now I run around with one all the time, whether I like it or not. And it's got three phones in it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's crazy. So technology has been a big change for you. Huge. 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 Yeah. It's, uh, I attended meetings early on when I first got into sales and stuff. And, and I got into some of those, uh, never joined one, but I've heard the pitches about, um, you know, these businesses where you have a product and you recruit people to sell the product for you, these, I guess it's multi-level marketing type businesses and stuff. And I never got into one just cause opportunity wasn't right or whatever. But one thing they always said in every one of those meetings that stuck with me to this day is the, the this, this word leverage. You can leverage your time. You can leverage your effort. You can leverage your output by building a business where multiple people are helping you. And uh, what amazes me is how we can do that today, but it doesn't require necessarily recruiting people as much as it does just using technology. Because now I've got a person that does all my calling. I got a person that does all my follow up. I've got a person that does this. I got a person that does that. I, I'm selling right now as we're recording this probably on average to anywhere from five, 10 people right now on a video somewhere in front of somebody. <laughs> I've already recorded it once and then they're going to, based on the way they respond to that, I'm going to follow up with my voice or my email or my text. And so to be able to leverage uh, our time, our efforts and our money without having to necessarily, I'm not necessarily against those type of business, but I know some people are, you don't have to do that type of business to be able to utilize the, um, the benefits of that type of business. So I think that's cool. So yeah, we live in a day and age where we have reinvented the concept 
of the law of multiplied effort. It used to be the only way you could multiply your effort is by hiring more people. Yeah. Get yeah. more people to do what you do and grow yourself out there. And now there's a whole second category that didn't exist and that's automation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Just look and see like what 20 years ago or ish where if you had a lead for a business, you would like call that lead and work that lead and just call it and follow up. And it was a long draw and you're doing it as a one man yeah. show, yeah. the follow up. Now, fast forward, I mean, technology has been around that's doing this now, where it's doing the follow up for you is here just in the last several years in a big way. But it's doing a lot of that follow up for you where it sounds authentic and the messages, uh, you know, organic, where it's making the connection stronger and you're not even doing it, yeah. you know, yourself. So uh, just go from there to where you are here today. So you're able to, you know, just you, you, like Chris just said, you don't have to hire another person to bring them in to handle the business, the technology and the workflow and, you know, a variety of other things are going to, you know, do those jobs, you know, for you, you know, there. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I got clients that I met one time over a year ago and a year later they're calling me up saying, okay, you finally convinced me I'm ready. Let's do this. And I'm like, who are you? You know, because my machine did all that. <laughs> you know, I don't remember that. You know, Dude, and I'm having to look them up and say, okay, let me find out who these people are. Let me look through the history. That's a nice problem to have, but it's really neat when you think about it. It's so cool. Dude, I've been seeing you, Chris, for years. Oh, really? Nice. All right. I had that happen to me Sunday. I had a lady send me the sweetest text. Uh, Sunday after church, I was coming home, just uh, uh, spoke uh, this past Sunday at church in Spindale, and um, she was just gushing about all the things, and thank you so much for saying this and doing this. And all she was talking about was a a funnel of mine in my You Are Worth More funnel where I was responding, encouraging, and inspiring, and doing this and just trying to help people meet people where they're at. And this lady, I mean, was, and then went and left a positive review. And if you talk to her today, she's from Cincinnati, Ohio. She would swear up and down. I had a conversation with Terry Wilson online. And I never, and I don't want to butter, burst her bubble. And I was transparent with her later when she left that review. I said, I just want to thank you for taking the time and leaving that review. It was so sweet. Well, you took the time and said this, and you did it at 6 o'clock in the morning. I didn't think I'd ever get a hold of you at 6 in the morning on a Sunday, and you're available. (laughs) I mean, she was just like going on and on. uh, How She was so grateful. Uh, But to Gary's point, you know, you write this stuff in an authentic voice, in a caring voice, in a way that, that talks like a person and not a robot or some sort of you know, phone center out of, you know, wherever the Middle East, but just like a real person, it's amazing how it will literally nurture relationships for you. We couldn't do that in times past. And I think that's, that's real cool. I think it's real. Oh yeah. Well then, you know, you guys have talked about and Chris, like, Hey, you went out and hit the street you know, knocking on doors, you know, doing Kirby vacuum cleaners from way back in the day, you know, so that's, that's an example. Yeah. Oh, you know how, hey, that's how it was. Yeah. That, that, that was normal. And if you wanted to, to have leads, you wanted to have sales, you wanted to be successful in sales, that's how you did it, doing it yourself, like hitting every single lead, however that you're doing it that way. But fast forward where we're at now, that's not the case, you know, now. So we're able to, uh, just like Chris said, he's able to use technology in a variety of different ways. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's just amazing actually to think about it and really comprehend on where it was, you know, in all, all of our careers to where it's at here today. Uh, cause technology is just a monster, yeah. you know, it's very in depth and, uh, you know, and so, uh, it, you know, we we know of the basics of all that here. We teach that here, but uh, it's definitely something that's very, it's just going to keep moving forward. So uh, you always want to uh, be able to make sure that you're going to be learning that technology too. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. The uh, Let's talk about technology. The uh, All you guys are really young when it, you know, when it comes to technology. The, uh, I mean, I think Lori and I might have a better kind of clue on this. The, uh, 
I don't know, you know, if any of you guys had a, uh, you know, had to take a slide rule class uh, <laughs> when you were in high school. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I mean, that's how we got to the moon was with that silly slide roll. <laughs> what and was the a, thing called really with the computer. beads that you would run across the ab- abacus? Oh my goodness! Yeah. Oh, wait a second. I learned how to use an abacus <laughs> in sixth grade. I used an abacus, yeah. And then, and, and then we graduated to slide rolls. And uh, I took one of the very first computer classes in college, and I learned uh, both. Uh, I think it was COBOL, and. Uh, we had the punch cards and so you had to do all you had to write it all out then you had to do the punch cards and your final grade was when you ran your cards through did you make a flower <laughs> <laughs> and you know they had to build a power center to run the uh the computer that would that was locked up in there i mean it was pure insanity uh, I was one of the first brokers in the investment industry to get a computer in 1983, and I had an IBM that was probably this. oh about four times the size of this computer, and the, and I had two floppy disk drives. And so I would go in, get it started, pull it out, and then I'd put the data one in, and then it, at night I would take home two diskettes in my briefcase and that was it because I didn't want anything touching the diskettes for, for fear they would erase. Yeah, And <laughs> you know, you look at the evolution over the last 40 years, Ooh, 40 years, long time from the old IBM, you know, and I had one of the first hard drives in 1984, 85, somewhere in there. Wow. Man. Got a floppy disk drive one, you know, one little itty bitty hard drive. And it was kind of like, really, we're going to leave our stuff in the computer overnight. <laughs> and, you know, fast forward to where we are today and you look at the acceleration of technology, you know, pagers, Palm pilots, uh, you know, you name it. Uh, we've had it and the evolution is getting faster. And one of the keys to our success is going to be sitting here taking a little bit of time every day and saying, OK, what's next? Yeah. Because just 12 months ago, AI was something that you, you really yeah. didn't mess with. And now people are getting in, and it's interesting to watch the mistakes that people are making because they're trying to do it too fast without learning the basics. Yeah. Because once you learn how to do the prompts, yep. which is right now where the success is, yep. because I think I had a discussion with Lori about this uh, where, you know, People can smell AI from a mile away now. Yeah. And you've got to use AI as a tool to make it yours. But you also have to start to extrapolate into the future and say, okay, where are we going to be in six months, 12 months, given the rapid change? I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, change breeds opportunity, and opportunity is what we live off of. I mean, that's our oxygen. You know, without, without change... There is no need for problem solving, and that's where we can bring value. Lori, what are some changes that you have seen in your life in the last, oh, I don't know, six months? Well, <laughs> first, off, I, I, first off, I think that Bobby just called me old. <laughs> well, I was trying to get away from that so you wouldn't pay. <laughs> I'm trying to help Bobby out. <laughs> He said, "Get your walker." <laughs> learning cobalt and Fortran I, and the punch cards, I remembered. <laughs> do, do you remember winding your engine in the to start it up on your car? <laughs> hey, she Harry, is at a horse track. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking bourbon. Do you remember that band Rush? Ah, just a little bit. A little Y Y Z. My hey, first concert was Rush. My yeah. first concert. I saw him live too back in the eighties or something like that. I but still anyway, rock Tom Sawyer every day. They had a a song uh, that went plus the change, plus the la même chose. The more things change, the more they stay the same. The same. Yeah. Right. So, what what I like to kind of picture or describe for people, um. There are 
four basic categories of marketing or advertising. You've got directional. That's a, a buyer looking for a seller. Okay. So for example, back way back in the day, if I needed a plumber, you went to I would go get pages. my phone book. Yeah. <laughs> <my yellow> <laughs> Yeah. Right. And and outside that book, it would say San Antonio, Texas. And I would turn to plumbers. Right. Mm -hmm. And there I'd find all kinds of plumbers. The big ads get all the calls. The little tiny ads, they don't get any calls. So what do I do today? I go to Google. Yeah. I search plumbers, San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. I get a result. The top ads, the ads that get all the calls, are what? On the first page of Google. So there's no difference. In that. That's true. It's just the medium. Medium has changed. That's right. The mindset of the consumer is the same. Yeah. Right? Then you've got promotional. That is a buyer looking for a seller. So back in the day, I might be uh, a restaurant, and what do I do? I send out a direct mail card. I don't know anything about anybody that's going to get that piece in their mailbox, but I'm a seller looking for buyers. Some will respond, some will What do we do today? We send out an SMS message to a group of numbers. We don't know if they're hungry or not that day, um, but it, it's the same mindset, right? Yep. Then yep. we've got present. How, and that, that is how you appear in the market, in your market for your industry. It used to be you'd pass out a brochure, a printed brochure about your company. Today, we have websites. Same thing. It's an online brochure, right? Mm -hmm. And then the last thing is is um, awareness. You want to make sure that, you're, that your market is aware that your company exists in your market. Back in the day, what was it? It was a billboard. It was a, a radio uh, commercial or a TV advertisement. Hey, I'm here. I'm open for business. And what do we do now? Actually, I don't remember what we do now about that. Podcasting. But, th well, there you go. <laughs> good, good answer. <laughs> Webinars. <I> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's my little take on the more things change, because we're talking about how things have changed, the, the more they stay the same. Oh, so yeah. you, you've just got to, you know, well, yes, I think that's the point, changing. and that's my encouragement to people, no matter how old they are. And, and there's this dichotomy right now. There's an older group that knows how to do business. They know how to, because they've been doing business for 40 years. They know business, know how to build relationships, know how to follow up, know how to close. They know it. What they struggle with is the technology. And then you got these young guys. Vice versa. Vice versa. Mm -hmm. They can make this stuff sing, but they ain't got a clue how to build a relationship, how to close a sale, how to talk to someone. Right. I mean, and so no matter where you're at on the spectrum, it seems to me. It's two different skill sets. It's two different skill sets that you got to pick up. And mindsets. And mindsets. Yeah, yeah. Well, also, real quick, Lori, you were talking about the yellow pages. Well, you know, every business like or that wanted business, they were paying that ad space for in the yellow page. Oh, yeah. And remember, everybody was waiting to get their new updated yellow pages. to be. Oh, there. yeah. Hey, I didn't get mine. Did you get yours? And everybody there was a big buzz about it. You're like, oh, yeah, I got mine. Yeah, yeah, I got. It. And then you're like, oh, OK, now I got now. I, now I, I can get some you know, help uh, if I need, you know, or anything done around the house or any kind of service. Right. So it's really important to make sure you had that copy that came well, around, you know? Right. And, and so back, I mean, back in the day, if you wanted your phone to ring, you had to be in the yellow pages Yeah. today. If you want your phone to ring, you've got to be on the first page of Google, yeah. but it's the same thing. Yeah. 
It lit- is literally the same thing. I agree. Hey, and then one other quick thing is when I first got on the internet when AOL came out, <laughs> and I got this computer. I had a broadband. Oh, really? I had a I had a twelve hundred <laughs> broadband man, and I tied up the phone line. I mean, I thought I was doing. Yeah, you couldn't it. place a call. It's near, and you're like connected. You're like your friends and family. Man, I've been calling you for days. It's been busy. I go. Well, hey, I was on. I was, hey, I'm on the internet. Oh, you know yeah. what? <laughs> you got mail. <laughs> hey, you remember they and used I moved to from a twelve hundred broad to a twenty four hundred broad, and I thought I was going oh, places. You man, something. You. <laughs> you remember those CDs they used to send you in the mail? I mean, you would get those AOL oh, yeah. CDs all the time in the mail, and they're just getting you mm-hmm. to sign up. I still remember those. I remember two to me the two books, magazines, articles, whatever you want to call them, that you had to have was the Yellow Pages. You got that because that was your business, and you had to have the Weekly TV Guide. Those yeah. were the those yeah. were the two things in the house that you know life <laughs> circled around right there. You couldn't watch TV unless you had that damn TV Guide. <laughs> Sorry, you know, what you don't you don't know what to watch. You got to have a TV Guide. <laughs> In 87, I was building computers, and I still remember it. We had a hard drive about the size of this book, right? (laughs) It was eight megabytes, and we were thinking, my God, (laughs) you'll never use that much storage. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) All right. Eight megabytes. There's no way you'll ever use that much, you know? Oh man! You go through that on a thumbnail. Oh yeah, but also, <laughs> but what you guys are saying about like, uh, like what you said, Terry, what you know, the young group uh, that's out now, they know technology, but they don't know how to build those relationships. And then the older group, they know how those skills and following up, and you know, talking to networking and stuff like that. And then they're kind of you know working on the technology too. So. Uh, that's a different way to think about it, but it's very true. Yeah. You know, they're uh, to actually have all that. Both of them yeah. is just, um, you know, something that's uh, it valuable, you know, there for well, sure. Well, that's so. why Bobby hit a point earlier is about people trying to make it too complicated. And I agree, you know, for those, those old soldiers in the field that know how to sell, know how to close a deal, know how to make things happen. You only have to know about two or three things. Just get those two or three things right. You know, how to build this page as far as an opt-in form, how to get it to go to a calendar, and then call. You know, if you knew just that, you're going to make some money in today's world. If you know how to build an opt-in form that sends them to something that compels them to want to move forward to at least book uh, book an appointment with you and have an online calendar, you're golden. And that That's is it. not complicated. You could learn just that much right there, literally in two to three days. A hey, matter of fact, you don't have to learn that changes. much. Yeah, so just, it's yeah, done for you. It's done for you. And even with the live call transfer. Yeah. So when the lead comes in, we turn on live call transfer. Somebody wants to wire in and, and kind of connect with their leads within seconds. Yeah. Then we can hit the, we can flip a switch. And when a lead comes in, it the, the system tracks you down wherever you're at and put you on the phone with your lead with you had to have to do anything. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, that's done for you. We teach you the basics behind the scenes, but you don't have to go at it alone to eat. You're not going to do that alone, by the way. Okay. It's just not going to happen in this lifetime. You're going to need somebody to show you how to do it or set it up for you, which is done here. We have both. We can show you and we can also set it up. So, but then the day it's, uh, definitely, you know, technology, you know, there for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the technology changes, but the system stays the same, like Lori was saying. It's the business principle right? the process, stays the same, yeah. The process never changes. You still got to get in front of a person. Yep. You still got to give them an offer. You still got to ask them to buy it. Yep. And if they don't buy it right away, you still got to follow up with them to get them to buy it later. Yep. Right? Yep. And yep. it still takes a certain amount of times before they say, okay you yep. know what i mean back in my first job i was told you got to ask them to buy it at least six times six until times. they're going to give you that check that's right so 
at least six times, I was making sure I wasn't going to leave that house until I told him six times to buy it from me. That's exactly you know? right. Man, you <laughs> want to leave no, no stone unturned, Miller time. Let me tell you, man. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, man, at, at 7 a.m., we were in the office. You guys remember these things. By 8 a.m., you're on the phones because people haven't left for work yet. It's time to set those appointments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, hey, even then when they set an appointment, guess what? We're sending out reminders for those appointments to follow yeah. up. And we're making sure they're going to show up for these appointments. So when they come into the system, into the TW3 system, just when we, we book an appointment, we're making sure they show, they show up. Because guess what? They don't show up. We're sending out a message. We're going to cancel on them before they cancel on us. Okay? So that way... We're going to catch them. You were, we're, we're going to show them. Uh, we're going to be in control the whole time. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's that that works out very well. So, yeah. Absolutely. You know, Chris reminded me of a, a story when uh, Mr. Wonderful was doing the rainbow business. And he brought this young kid into the business. He was like 18 years old. And he goes out on a show. And he demonstrates the whole thing. And then he packs it up and he carries it back out to the car. And, and the, the couple he was showing to him followed him out there and said, well, aren't you going to ask if we want to buy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh hey, before goodness. you put that up, can I buy? <laughs> <laughs> you got to ask him for the sale. Out of the car, carry it back to their house because they wanted to buy it. So his you know, his demo was good, but he left out a big part. By for <laughs> the the most sale. crucial part. <laughs> yeah. And you'd be surprised how many people do that in every industry that I've come across. They'll oh, go yeah. through and they'll do these long sales presentations or, the, or even a, a small sales presentation. And they'll go, all right, well, thanks for your time. <laughs> What? Like all, all I'm right. here to do is entertain you, not to actually. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice to live in your world where you get paid to do nothing. You know, I don't live that right. way. I get paid on commission. <laughs> For real. <laughs> They must have missed that ABC always be closing uh, oh, seminar, right? Right, <laughs> dude. When I'd roll up for the house, my rainbows. The first thing I asked them says, "I'm here to show you a rainbow today. Are you ready to buy it now?" I, I right now I'm asking them for the sale right up front. Sometimes, nice. yeah, they might. Say, yeah, I actually, I've already looked at one, and I'd like to go ahead and get one. Well, save me you at time, you know. But uh, I never you know, that wouldn't work for me because I never worked on appointment. I always just went knocked a door. Oh, we yeah. had appointments. Thank God, I couldn't do the. I could not do the cold call. Well, what about door. now? We actually have to talk people out of doing this. Okay, yeah. so you know, and they're like going, "Wait a second, you're not going to tell me I can't do this." That is a nice yeah. change. Yeah. I tell you what, uh, talking about changes, I, that you just nailed my favorite thing about the way we do business now versus the way I've always done business in direct sales. Up until TW three, I was always chasing people to try to sell them something. I always was pursuing people to try to sell something. Now I have people pursuing me wanting information that I have because I've learned how to sort of control the narrative because I've learned how to give people front load value to where they want more information, but not give them so much information that they don't need to talk to me. And that's a skill set I had to learn along the way. But once I learn how I can front load this conversation with so much value that it's going to compel you to, I really need to talk to Terry because he's hitting on some things that I didn't even know. That is a, that is a wonderful, wonderful change <laughs> that uh, I don't think a younger generation appreciates, but uh, get around some of these old dogs that's been door to door and, and had to sell and had to you know get porched and calling 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 they don't res, uh, respond and then what does your sales manager says have you gone to their house and waited on their porch for them yet well no i haven't done it well go <laughs> so i found myself a couple times just sitting on their front porch in a rocking chair waiting on them to get home from work well i've been calling and i just want to make sure y'all are okay <laughs> you know i've done that a couple times that life and lifestyle is so uh hard and i'm so thankful that it's it's different uh today in, in this business. oh yeah well that's most sales is uh you're going for the clothes okay yeah. it's very unique what you know we're actually 
you know, we reverse it around at the end where it just saves energy yeah. and effort, yeah. you know, there. So it just uh, makes it more, yeah, just a, a, a better, better, you know, business presentation, you know, for your service. Well, it so, makes for a better close too, because now close, they're yeah, asking yeah. you to close them rather than you asking. Uh, yeah, to yeah. Close. Oh, when you can, when you can take your offer and, and position it that way, that's a. Uh, yeah, that's just uh, it's going to be it's it's ideal in yeah, my opinion. That's the ideal well, sales environment. Let's talk about training for a second though because that's changed a lot too, right? Like going back to those early days, I had a van of people that I would have to drive around. I remember I had these new kids one time, there was six of them and none of them were on my team. Tom says to me, "Hey, these guys got nobody to take them out. Can you take them out?" And I was like, I don't want to take these people out. They're all brand new. I'll be running in and out of houses all day. And he's all like, I got no one else. I was like, okay, fine. So I took them out. And just like I said, I was running in and out of houses all day. I drop them off. I get them in a door. Within five minutes, they're calling because they're getting tossed out on their ear, right? <laughs> that was my entire day. <laughs> and then it was like, I don't know, six o'clock at night. And they're all, you know, moaning and you know, I'm tired and they're griping and I come across this fuchsia house okay <laughs> fuchsia <laughs> and and I say okay go knock that door who wants that that's a sale right there and and they nobody would get out of the, out of the van and I said look y'all got I'm telling you that house is a sale nobody paints their house fuchsia if they're not willing to buy anything you got Right. And <laughs> they wouldn't get out of the car. I said, what are y'all going to get out of this van? Or I am going to get out of the van. I'm going to bring you all inside. I'm going to make you watch me. I'm going to go get the check. And that's what I did. So I went in there and I went over and I talked to the lady. I said, I have about six people with me and I'm training today. If I promise they'll be very quiet. Can I sit them around the edges of the room and just let them observe and take notes? And to my surprise, she agreed at six <laughs> o'clock at night. I'm a complete stranger. I'm saying I got six other strangers with me. Can we all come on in your house? And she says, sure. But then again, she did live in a fuchsia house. So yeah. there it is. And I sat all these people around and I did my show and I trained them. Right. And in the end, I did get the check and they wanted a piece of it for some reason. I'm like, that ain't going to happen. Right. Yeah. But. That was the hard way to do training back in the day. You had to, you had to actually go out there. Now we go, oh yeah, right, and here's here's Gary's way, right? Oh yeah, I want you to go watch this video and then give me a call back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's what we do now. We go go watch this video online. Yeah, and then get back mm -hmm. to me. There's your training, right? Uh, Go to orientation. There's your training. The Go to way this. we've got our membership Amazing. modules set up where they go through a se sequential way of, and it, they can do it on their, their time frame, their rate of speed, all of that, and then do group training through Zoom calls. I, I would much rather do the training like we do today than back when I first started my insurance agency and was having to recruit people and then meet with them one on one and then police every piece of business they wrote to make sure they were writing it through my agency because I'm giving them these leads and stuff and didn't want them taking advantage of us. That's when we even developed TW3s. They said, what am I doing? I'm going to flip the script. You want my training? You want my leads? You want my way of doing business? You pay me. And then you go write insurance with whoever you want. If you want to write me, great. If you mm -hmm. get good commissions, me, great. If you get it better with someone else, go at it. That's when the world opened up. And so that's, yeah. the, that's the power we're able to give other people as well. And that's what I tell people. I say, hey, look, before you do anything, anything, we have a mandatory training that takes place before anything happens, before the green light, before you go. It takes a couple of days to do this training, okay? Is based, you know, one skill set, but it's going to take a couple of days, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't do anything until you get this training done. And once it's done, then you can operate the business on a functional way. And then we're going to bring you along. So, uh, uh, and that's what I tell clients too. So they, uh, yeah, they have to know that too. And they're like, okay, okay. So they're, so they know there's training too, that we got, uh, you know, um, you know, things in place to, you know, teach them before yeah. they start, you know, and stuff. So, yeah. 
You got You want to get in my van today, you better already know what you're doing. Go through those trainings first. Exactly. I met a nice young man today, and I had a great conversation with him. And I, I told him, yeah, I'm going to bring you on to my team. But first, you got to go and get into my course, and you got to learn all those things because I'm not going to take my time. And that way you don't have to take from to, ground to train you. That's right. You know what I mean? Well, you want to teach people how to construct great sentences and paragraphs to move people. You don't want to have to teach them their alphabet and how to spell. Right. You know, a video can do that. Maybe. Well, hush, Lori. <laughs> it can. <laughs> Maybe. I'm yeah, still looking for the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ABC Mouse. <laughs> you know, the only thing that uh, we have to continually add to the mix is uh, a lot of times the face-to-face you know, where, where we actually have the people, like I try to get everybody to sell me the system yeah. that I've trained so that at least I'm going to ask them the questions and I know they're going to get asked so that they have a vague idea what the answer is. Yeah. Because that's one thing that uh, the training really won't do is that, you know, you got to have that initial first role, couple of calls. Role play. Yeah, yeah, role play. Yeah. And that's good. I, I try to incorporate that so that, you know, uh, cause I know when I first started, no, it seems like everywhere I start the first thing, they always say, you know, the training is good luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it was in the army. When I got to my duty station, they were like, yeah, here's your office. There's all your equipment in that corner. Figure it out. <laughs> I was told that it was going to be here and you guys were going to trade me. <laughs> we just did. Here's your manual. <laughs> yeah, here's the manual. That's right. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that's good, Bobby. That that role playing of having an active person in front of you pushing back, making you respond to objections, that's invaluable. You know, that, Does anybody even do it anymore? Uh I know when I went to the bank, they never did any role play. You know? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's really, a lost art. It really is. Bobby does yeah. it, but he's he's one of the last Mohicans, if you will. You know, because uh, it, it takes time. It just takes time uh, to do. But it is invaluable, for sure. That might be, oh, a, yeah. that might be a great thing we do next week on our Mastermind. There we'll, you go. We'll do a role play and we'll go down and let people sell the the TW3 system. And then I can or someone you guys can, we'll take turns just object. Hey, that's a good one, yeah. Yeah, that's just like objecting that, yeah. to the sale, making them, you know, uh, uh overcome the objections and all the common things. Well, this is a pyramid scheme. Why is it not a pyramid scheme? You know, you know whatever. Well, can you guarantee that if I do everything you say in two weeks, I can get X, X, Y, Z, you know, all those common, uh, you know, uh, questions you're going to get. Mm-hmm. That's great. We might do that. Good idea, Bobby. Good. Man, Terry, you got an idea. What I got it from Bobby. I, <laughs> I listen and then I, I, I make it happen and call it my idea. That's what I did with Larry Dotson on the tap cards. The big five <laughs> learning from each other here. That's <laughs> right. Supposed to be inspiring others. <laughs> you got to listen to Bobby. He's got something to say. That's you right. better keep your ear to the street, man. That's right. Keep the <laughs> ear to the ground. For real. Value. For real. Value. I think we all got something to, you know, add. So everybody kind of like works in like a think tank. Right? That's true. I, I love that mastermind yeah. that we we have and that group we have because it's uh, even when people ask questions. I find uh, I I get comments afterwards in the chat bot that thank you for even though like tonight we went through Daniel's uh, website and some of the things he was having problems with I guarantee you two or three other people on there tonight oh okay that's why you know and they didn't even know how to articulate the question or didn't want to ask it or whatever but they're always grateful for that so I think it's good yeah stuff. and with the phone numbers too you know and stuff so yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's changes going on in that. That's something else that's just changed it uh, for you guys that uh, are doing online marketing and using text marketing. If your platform is not keep keeping you up to speed with the latest uh, regulations that's come down the pike, you might be finding that your texting and uh, voice marketing 
starts to diminish real quick and you won't even know why. And what's happening is your numbers are being blocked and you don't even see it because it's not that it will bounce back. You won't see a bounce. You won't see didn't go through or anything like that. It'll go out there in the, the ether. And then you're wondering, why is no one responding to my text anymore? Why is, why am I not getting, you know, the clicks I was getting or this or that? And it's because there's a new regulation in place that if you haven't complied with the carriers, the big ones, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, those guys, it, they're not allowing it to go through to their 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 mobile carriers and users. Well, you're probably still going to get charged. Oh yeah, you're still going to get the data charges. <laughs> oh no, you are. You <laughs> are. Yeah. yeah. You just you're going like, why is no one responding? And everybody's saying, I don't get your text anymore. So uh, uh, that's one of the things. You know, that- I was going to mention that the other day when we were talking about this is that 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 very thing right there is something else that we bring to the table because we're knowledgeable um, and we can, you know, we can actually help people with um, and express it in an authoritative way because we know, well, here, here's what you need to do about this. Here's what's going on yep. with the carriers. Here's how you fix it. Yep. Yeah. Now that, that's, that goes to the point of why community is so important. Because you're out there and you're working in your business and you don't have time to keep up with every stinking little thing that's going on. I mean, who does? And that's why it's so important to be part of a network like this that, you know, you know, I'm in the restaurant business. I'm busy doing this. But I use text marketing to let people know what my specials are and to drive my lunch crowd and all that other stuff. I'm not paying attention to what's going on. I just expect this tool to work. And then all of a sudden this tool doesn't work anymore. That's the reason why you want to be a member at TW3 because you're in a group, a network of business owners in their own respective industries, but they use these tools and are connected to people that that's all they do is keep up with the latest in marketing and stuff so that everyone's on, you know, task, everyone's compliant and everybody's as efficient and as effective as possible. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just like I said earlier, like, uh, you know, technology, if you're doing technology by yourself, the odds are you're not going to bring it home. Uh, It's just very vast. Like I said earlier, it's very vast, very in depth. I mean, it is, it's, uh, it's just huge. Okay. And it's ever changing. So you're even, we're not perfect, but we've got a strong professional grasp, uh, you know, the basics here to where we're able to, uh, you know, uh, help people. And we're diverse enough to where uh, if I miss something, you're going to catch it. And if you miss something, so and so, someone else is going to catch it. But we've got enough people in enough different markets and industries that we're working together and say, hey, have you heard about this? This is going on so that yeah. we can inform the entire network. Hey, be alert, be on the lookout for this because this is changing. Yeah. If you're doing anything by yourself, you know, you're not going to make it. You got to have some sort of a support group behind you. You got to have some sort of place to say, I don't know what I'm doing and have other people say, well, here's how you handle that. Right. You know? And that's what this group is so great for is like, you know, if, if I got a question and I'm like, you know what, I'm a, I'm a new entrepreneur. I'm just starting my business and I don't know anything. We've all been there. Yeah. And we've all been through the same pitfalls that you're going to experience. And as you experience them, ask people, yeah. Because people will give you the guidance you need. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, Man, tell it, tell it. That's, that's right? right. That's right. right. Well, I mean, yeah, it's just too much true. to ask anyone to work their business, do all the things that they need to do in their business to make it function the way it should. And on top of that, be an expert in technology. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. just, that's, that's a big lift. And that's why the, being in a group like this is so, so beneficial. Cause yeah, you can go, anybody can go out and buy a website. Anybody can go out and pick up this little tool here, this little tool, tool here, but you're not going to be able to stay up with the latest and greatest of what's going on with the compliance issues, the, the better way of doing it, how to make it all work holistically together, seamlessly, all of those things that are going to drive your efficiencies, which it, ultimately are going to drive your profits you're not going to be able to do that and be a good cook at the same time (laughs) 
I oh, mean, yeah. definitely. I mean, hey, when you can get around people that are doing things that you're not doing, yeah, that right there is going to move the needle for you. Okay, because if you're like we said earlier, if you're doing it by yourself, you're not going to get to the finish line. Nah. Okay, you got to get yourself around other people. Uh, you know, and and the right people. Yeah. You know, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, look at me. I, I've only been here five years. And, and you're the new guy. Years ago, <laughs> I didn't have a clue what I was doing, yeah. but I leaned on you guys. Right? Yeah, that's true. And now look at me. I'm hanging with the big five. The big five, <laughs> and all five showing up. I'm telling you, this is just amazing. Perfect attendance. Perfect attendance. Perfect attendance. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, some something to remember about that is everyone has strength. Yeah. Everyone has weaknesses. You know, when my kids were still in school and they would come home, most parents would ask, how was school today? And you get a one-word answer, fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's typical. This mama asked, did you ask a good question at school today? What's that mean, mom? (laughs) Did you ask a good question? Well, think about if you ask a question about something, what does that say that you're you're engaged and you're, you're thinking about the, the information that's being revealed to you. Yeah. And, you know, just asking that question has helped what, what the true meaning is or what that new skill is. And then, you know, that's why that mastermind, again, people are asking questions. Yeah. And that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. It's a good thing for them to ask questions. Now, when they ask it, the 20th time the same question and they're going to get the same answer that's a whole different story <laughs> preach oh yeah <laughs> go ahead stay right there say something else on that time <laughs> well oh. my son just started school with 11th grader and one of his classes is entrepreneurship oh cool. wow. it was his first week at school this week right is he teaching he it up, he comes home he goes you know what i said you're taking entrepreneurship I go, how you like it? He goes, but dad, I was in the class. I mean, I thought they were talking about you when they were going <laughs> for all the information. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I was thinking to you the whole time. So, <laughs> so, so you Gary, know, you know, <laughs> you're every, day, <laughs> every day when he comes home from school, what are you going to ask him? I have to ask my questions ready, right? Yeah. No, you're going to say, did you ask a good question at school today? Oh, okay. Did you ask a good question? That's a good question. The question he needs to ask them first is, do you not know I am the son of the infamous Greenbacks? Oh, (laughs) should I be teaching this class? (laughs) Well, the second, you know, the second thing he ought to be asking is, has has the teacher ever been in a business? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, there's yeah, that. A lot of times they, they yeah. are not. Well, well, I don't want to get him. I don't want to get him any bad marks now. I don't think I'll get him, you know. <laughs> what do they say, Bobby? For those who can, they do. For those who can't, they. Can't they teach? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I always thought it was interesting, you know, you see these entrepreneurships and classes being taught by professors who've never been in business. I mean, they know the theoretical behind it, but they don't have any of the battle scars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, It's like me teaching batting because I've watched enough baseball. (laughs) Hey, and that's like attorneys teaching at Harvard Law School. They're not very good attorneys. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're not very good attorneys. <laughs> That's exactly right. You remember that movie uh, with Rodney Dangerfield, Back to School? Yeah. He's in that class, and the dude's like, well, we're going to create a company. He's all like, you left out a bunch of stuff. You got to pay the team soon. You, gotta- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, this isn't how business works. <laughs> Oh, and that thing and when Rodney Dangerfield turns in that paper and the teacher gives it back and says, you don't know anything about Kurt Vonnegut. And yes. then he turns around and throws the thing at Vonnegut and says, hey. I'm stopping that check, Vonnegut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's back when well, movies yeah, were funny. Have a topic on that, right? Yeah, Not for real. Right. For real. <laughs> hey, I agree with everything Lori said in that last bit there, except yep. for one. 
I don't have any weaknesses, Lori. I only have strengths in well, training. Oh, you're perfect, huh? Oh, wow. I got strengths and I got strengths in training. That's it. No weaknesses. <laughs> well, I, I met everybody except Mark. <laughs> except for Chris. Except for Chris. And, well, and Jesus, Jesus of just course. I'm well, wired, you know. He, he's gonna he's get got there. the battle scars to prove it. Yeah, he's, he's proven, right? What'd you say, Bobby? What? Oh, I thought you said something. No. Oh, it's like it. We're giving the people more time. We're going extra time with the big five. I mean, this ought to be. Uh, I'm telling you, know, we're like in after hours. Bonus round, right? You know what's amazing is every one of these shows have been just about right at an hour. A few minutes under, a few minutes over, but uh, it's almost like we run out of things to say right at the hour mark. We all could keep talking for hours and hours and <laughs> hours and hours. What are you talking about, Terry? <laughs> yeah, but could we continue to say anything? <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's... We, we yeah, I'm kind of reaching the end of the line here. The uh, After the golf tournament this weekend, I'm out of here. Yeah, you've been out <laughs> in a steam bath for the last week. It's been Woo. hot in the southeast. How was that, anyway? The... Uh, the golf was phenomenal. I mean, I've never seen such golf. And uh, I've been around that sport a long time. Uh, I was actually at the uh, the 16th green, and I got to watch them tee off at 14. So I got to see a lot of golf, and uh, I got to mingle with a lot of people. Uh, you know, I live for this kind of stuff. And, you know, just being out there, yeah, it was hot, uh, beyond hot. I mean, it was over a hundred each day with, you know, it's weather you wore and, you know, but everybody was out there doing the same thing. So, uh, you know, I like the, the way everything is and it's a historic course with a, you know, a big time story behind it. And, you know, you know, the 25 year old kid had, you know, you know, he had eight days of golf that I don't think anybody in the history of the game has had. You know, because he won the fun, you know, previous Sunday by shooting, you know, a 28 on the back nine to win the BMW. And then, then he brings that streak into Atlanta and pretty much, you know, laps the field. <laughs> and, you know, that, that was pretty cool to see. Wow. That is cool. Yeah. Front row seat. Like front row seats that. That is awesome. Cool. Very cool. Beyond cool. the front row. Well, Lori, when do you get back to San Antonio? Well, we're going to head out of here on Friday. Oh, wow. And you've been out for, what, two two or three weeks? I don't know. It's been a couple weeks at least. I don't know. I've been all over. Yeah, you were. I've been been to Knoxville. I've been to Pennsylvania. Yeah. Well, you hadn't been to South Carolina yet. Well, this is a national Big Five show here, man. This thing national, not local. She's on tour. She's on tour. Yeah, so we'll take two days to get home because Mr. Wonderful can't stand and sit in the car for 16 hours. I don't blame him. There's no need to do that. They make hotels. I'd do it. Hey, well, you're crazy. <laughs> you gotta take, gotta play it safe. I mean, I'm, I remember I, one time well, I was traveling and there was a trucker in front of us and he was a little bit swervy, not too bad, just a little bit. And I said, you know what? It is just not worth it no, not to me. be on here later, even though I was about an hour away from where I had decided we were going to stop. I said, it's not worth it. We went ahead and stopped in. By the time we got into our hotel room, Lori, there was a 12 car accident involving that same truck oh, on wow. the same highway. And I would have been probably right in it. Wow. But the safe ain't always a bad idea. Nope. If you get tired, pull over for sure. For sure. Right. For sure. Unless you're driving a Tesla. Unless you're driving, then you just yeah. close your eyes and you say, Elon, take the wheel. In there. <laughs> well, you had Lori and Miller time and myself. Oh, in my uh, word. Got it. Living so on the wild side in the Tesla, man. Let me tell you. Funniest, <laughs> funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Miller time hammering down on that Tesla. See how fast oh. it go. And, and. <laughs> Man, yeah, that thing at a buck twenty six, man. I was like, what? <laughs> and Lori's back here. Slow down. <laughs> this slow truck got in the way or I got enough. Yeah, I need some Kentucky bourbon back here, stat. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I so asked funny. Terry, I said, am I good? Or are we going to get pinched out here? He said, hey, man, out here, you're good. Yeah. I said, okay. He, he told he told me to get on. I said, I don't feel like going to jail like this weekend. I said, I'm in yeah. trying to be good. <laughs> we go, get, yeah. was, there any, was there any reason you were going 130 miles an hour? <laughs> yeah, because I could. <laughs> yeah, Gary <laughs> drove it like a grandma, though. Well, Chris, of course, man. I refused to drive it. No. Gary said he wanted to have a good time, but he didn't want to wear orange for ten to twenty. <laughs> yeah. I knew I'd have had some uh, bail money, y'all. You guys would have raised, raised. Oh, absolutely, right. absolutely. We got yeah, you. But that's one of the reasons why I stayed back so that I could post the bail. <laughs> yeah, Bobby stayed back with the barbecue. He said, "Y'all go on." <laughs> Well, if you told me you'd have bailed me out, then I would probably would have maybe give it a second thought, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, I would have just had a show on my my veteran card. I I got to get out of jail free card every time. Uh, so funny. Oh, hey, you could have kept going, Chris. <laughs> he, he had to let off of that bad boy. Oh, I was there's grabbing there's his arm. There's a slow truck in the way. I was like, all right, all right, you're good, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, guys, it's about that time. It's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? <laughs> mine better be in bed <laughs> <laughs> well this has been a great episode episode six of the big five podcast we're talking about changes and Lori is right the more things change the more they stay the same you know principles good business principles never change but the way we uh, and the mediums we use and the technology we use they're constantly changing and so it's learning those both those skill sets if you're new to business get around some mentors that can teach you the ropes and teach you good business practices principles strategies and ways of doing things if uh, you're new to business and you don't understand technology get around a mentor that can teach you uh, that and the great thing about technology tw3 is we teach both so it's a it's a holistic approach to everything you need to be successful in business if you want to connect with any of the big five go to terrywilson3.com slash big five of course they've got these videos on their independent sites as well so if you're listening to it through one of those sites i'm sure there's a link at the bottom somewhere that you can connect with one of us on that as well but if you don't see that you can always go to terrywilson3.com slash big five and the links to their sites systems and and getting into connecting with them to be able to talk to them are over there until next time this is the big five all five of us <laughs> saying good night <laughs>